So in approaching the question of trade integration, in, in, in approaching the question of tariff liberalization in Africa, we need to see it as part of a much broader strategy that must also address the infrastructure backlogs that we've identified, promote economic diversification, promote industrial development. Beyond that, we have to also understand that the trade integration agenda needs to be adjusted, it needs to be calibrated to take into account the real concrete realities in Africa, given the fact that we are a very diverse continent, different levels of development, um, and confront uh, similar but different um, uh, real constraints. And so we need, to, we need to take that into account. And that's been the broad perspective that has been adopted by South Africa. And I think to a large extent, it's now embedded in the way that the AU thinks about, about uh, integration. Now, in the AFCFTA itself, in the founding documents, and we'll get to that in, uh, in a little while, um, it doesn't explicitly adopt a developmental integration uh, approach. It doesn't articulate that as, an, as the way that it's, it's being pursued. But I think we need to understand it as the market integration component of the broader AU agenda uh, set out in uh, uh, the African Union Agenda 2063, which has this trade integration agenda under the, as we're calling the AFCFTA, but it also has a program of work on infrastructure development. It's well established. Uh, it's probably uneven in terms of how it's being implemented, but it is underway. And the AU has established a Committee of African Ministers of Trade to look at industrial development. I think it would not be um, unfair to say that the work of that committee um, needs to be resuscitated. Uh, they've done some initial work. Uh, it's been um, it's stalled for, for a number of years, but this is an important uh, dimension of the overall integration uh, agenda. When we talk about the, the trade integration pillar, uh, this is the work of the AFCFTA. The main overriding objectives are to enhance intra-Africa trade and investment. Um, and it aims to do so by beginning to harmonize through the negotiating process the tariff regime and the, 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 the commitments that we take in services um, across the continent. So there's an attempt to harmonize and simplify and make it seamless um, in, in terms of the regimes and the rules that govern trade in goods and services. At the same time, uh, very importantly, we recognize the differences in level of economic development, sizes of economies, uh, production structures. Um, so we need to introduce the principle of flexibility, and it's best captured in the trade uh, language as the principle of special and differential uh, treatment. A very important aspect of this negotiation um, was the idea in, in setting up the negotiating structure or setting up the negotiating framework is that we didn't want the negotiations of the AFCFTA to begin to unravel what we've already accomplished, say, in the Southern African development community. I suppose it would be the same for, for the countries in East, in East Africa, didn't want to open up the East African community negotiations. So the principal position that was taken was that those are preserved as is, and the negotiations would be between countries and regions that don't have existing trade relations uh, in, in place. So what that means for South Africa is that we would negotiate with partners outside the Southern African development community in principle. We have an ongoing negotiation under the tripartite free trade area, which is dealing with our negotiations with um, the EAC, with East Africa, and COMESA countries on the east, uh, eastern and southern parts of Africa that are not part of uh, the um, are part of SADC, and those are also preserved. So we're not going to try to reopen uh, those negotiations. So in effect, South Africa, SACU, and SADC will be negotiating with West Africa um, under the West African economic um, arrangement and with countries in North Africa where we don't have current relations. This is quite an important point because it simplifies the negotiation to a large uh, extent. The question we need to ask, why does South Africa need to take this seriously? What do we have 
what is our interest in this? Um, why should we be interested? And what does South Africa have to gain? It's clear to us, <clears throat> as you look at the process of growth that has been taking place on the continent, particularly uh, since the beginning of this millennium, you know, from the year around 2000, we've had an incredible um, process of revitalization and growth of African economies. Some economies were growing, as you know, by uh, over 10%, some as high as 13 or 17% in the case of Angola. On average, African countries grew at just over 5%. Um, an incredible uh, process um, when you look at it historically, because for a long period of time, African countries had not been growing. Certainly in the 1980s and the 1990s, African countries suffered from very low levels of uh, growth, very high levels of debt, and uh, increasing levels of poverty. So the first um, decade of this uh, new century brought um, a, a new re and revitalized process of growth and uh, on the continent. This is the context that created the impulse for trade integration to begin to get um, a new lease of life. So as I said, in the, you know, it was in the 70s and the 80s that uh, the idea of integration gained momentum with the Abuja Treaty, but it didn't gather much um, uh, you know, in the form of, of implementation because of the conditions uh, the economic conditions on the continent and um, other issues related to politics on the continent, um, it lost its momentum. So there's a new spurt that has taken place um, with the TFTA and now the CFTA. Uh, this is in a context where the growth that has taken place in Africa has begun to create um, an increased consumer market the narrative that we had before of a continent that was um, not growing and a continent that had no hope changed to one where people are now talking about a, a continent that's rising uh, because you see an increasing middle class, increasing opportunities for investment. A number of studies that are taking place have taken place. Um, reflecting uh, this uh, growing uh, surge of uh, economic activity on the continent. And South African uh, companies have also begun to expand rapidly across the African continent. As you will see, uh, when I, um, uh, the, the uh, International Trade and Administration Commission, the economists there, did some research a few years ago uh, looking at um, South Africa's trade with Africa. And what we can see from the numbers here is that uh, South Africa's trade with Africa has been growing rapidly uh, over the last uh, two decades. And you see our exports have been rising uh, phenomenally, um, growing to now uh, take up to 30% of our total exports uh, to the world, now goes to Africa. You'll also see that um, the quality of um, these exports is very high because it is uh, job intensive. Um, as uh, I think Ambassador Karim also pointed out, that the bulk of our exports into Africa comes from manufacturers. Over 60% of our exports are manufactured products. Um, and of the uh, one trillion uh, rand of exports into the world in 2016, um, about one uh, million jobs were created uh, in South Africa. And of those one million jobs, about 250,000 were due to our exports into Africa.